singer Marty Mendenhall, and I'm here with Kristen Bellings Woo! of the Storella Sisters. Woo! So, Marty, I want to know what is this all about? Well, today is a, a streaming live cookbook release party. Okay, wait a minute. So, this is a brand new cookbook? Yes, brand new cookbook. It's Great. actually called Marty's Music Kitchen Season 1 uh, Podcast Cookbook, and it's got um, it ties together all the best ingredients of the podcast, which is um, recipes, food, um, interviews, uh, podcasts, and it's just fabulous. I'm very excited about it. That is incredible. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot stop collecting cookbooks, so this is such exciting news. <laughs> now, if you have not experienced the Marty's Music Kitchen podcast, you should totally check it out. It's listed on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and about 20 other directories, and you should absolutely subscribe. When I was thinking about um, funding or doing this cookbook release party, I wanted to partner with um, a food charity because it's a food cookbook and someone that, uh, or a company, an organization that helps people with food. And I found Birch Community Services. I absolutely love them. And so all of uh, the packages that I put together today um, all have a donation uh, towards Birch Community Services. And I've discounted um, the interactive version and the physical version of the book to make that work. So. That is incredible. Now, I, I know this is not your first rodeo with raising funds. You actually helped raise funds for the Shriners Hospital System in Oregon, didn't you? I did. I was actually honored to be the first lady of the Al Cater Shriners in Oregon in 2019. That means my guy was potentate, head guy. And uh, we traveled uh, all over Oregon and all over the United States, raising awareness and funds uh, for the Shriners Hospital System. And at the end, um, just from my ladies project, I was able to give them a $12,000 check uh, towards um, a certain uh, function in their hospital. And it, it made me feel really good. So let's hear from one of the BCS participants in this upcoming short. When COVID-19 started, one of my first concerns was how is this going to affect um, Birch and then in turn our family. I was overwhelmed and so thankful to see that um, the donations are still coming in and this has been a place of safety and I love how uh, Birch has felt like a safe, a safe place. My husband works in the auto industry and probably my favorite thing about coming to Birch is that very first year when we found out about the boot program, he was able to replace some boots that were actually not safe for his workplace with ones that were much better. That has been a huge resource to our family. So during our time here at Birch, we have uh, managed to pay off one credit card and we have now have a savings account. One of the best things that Birch does well, they do a lot of things well, but is integrating all of us who are participants in volunteering. They make it easy for people to access, but also we have responsibility, which I think is very important. I appreciate that my kids are able to witness um, what the community is doing to help others and how we are responsible for part of how Birch runs and the example that it sets for them. I'm Xavier Entity. I've been at Birch Community Services since October of 2020. Something really cool about Birch, one of its founders, Barry Birch, once said it was 90% uh, about people and 10% about food. And I think it really, it really shows the longer you're a part of the program. Birch creates about 90% of my wife's and my groceries. It makes a real difference. I've had a chance to go through Restart once when I was a member a Birch as a, as a single individual and had some medical debt and I've since rejoined the program with my wife. We meet with Dino annually to discuss our, our finances and our family vision. The family vision kind of kind of makes the financial literacy aspect of Birch a very real process. Before I was a member at Birch I, I tried budgeting, I tried financial planning um, and it would be a really unfocused practice for me. But then my wife and I discussing what like where do we want 
to go with our family? How do we want to prioritize our finances? It makes it a focal point for, for how our money isn't, isn't just a, a means of getting by, but actually a tool um, for serving our communities and for serving our future children. It's a great place to be if you're struggling with your finances, if you're dealing with a lot of debt, um, because what you what you quickly start to see in, in your volunteering and your in your shopping is that we're all just trying to trying to figure it out together. For everyone who's who's in need financially or is in need of better access to food, um, you are welcome here, regardless of of, of anything. You know, um, every everyone's welcome here who's who's willing to work. Hi, I'm back and I'm here to welcome uh, Suzanne and Valerie, Suzanne Birch actually from Birch Community Services and Valerie Rippey. And um, I wanna say welcome. Um, it's an honor to be partnered with you. And I want to give you on behalf of the musicians um, that are um, in the show, we're gonna start this thing off with just a straight $200 check uh, for you to help out uh, feeding families. And then we also have um, signed cookbooks for you both. Um, so there you go. Um, and we want to know, um, first of all, um, Suzanne, how did this whole thing get started? Well, certainly unintentionally. When my husband and I got married, we had a commitment to be debt free. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found that we were meeting a lot of people struggling with purchasing food for their families. And when we were uh, approached by an organization that had extra bread that was going to waste. We thought, oh, we can pass that on to someone who then can save that money and use it to pay their other bills also. Oh. So that was almost 30 years ago. And, wow. Uh, yeah, so no. Well, I'm here to say that, you know, I went through, um, 40 years ago, I used an organization that is similar to yours to help me get back on my feet. Um, they helped me learn how to budget and put myself together, and now I'm completely out of debt, and I own my own house, and I couldn't have done it without the help of an organization such as yours. So, um, what is uh, the creative kind of force? Like, how does this work? Um, and you helping other people, Valerie. Yeah, Birch Community Services is unique in that it's not just providing food for families once and sending them on their way, but families come and they commit to being part of our community at Birch. So they come, they volunteer every month, they shop every week, they enroll in our financial literacy class and meet one-on-one -on -one with a financial counselor so that they can get one-on-one -on -one advice because everyone is different. Everyone is struggling for a different reason, um, but we can help them get from where they are to the next step. And just that piece of volunteering, um, all of our participants get to know each other. Um, starting from Suzanne and Barry's living room, giving out bread from their living room and garage, we now have a 22,000 square foot warehouse and have about 600 families that come every week. Yeah, I toured that. It's actually very impressive. And you guys have trucks. Um, and uh, explain to us, how do you get the food um, to fill your warehouse? Yeah, so all of our food is donated. Um, in 29 years, we have never purchased food. Um, it's all surplus from large grocery stores, distributors, restaurants um, that would otherwise be going to waste. So Birch not only is able to get this food to people who need it, but also it's keeping this food out of the landfill. Yeah, that's nice. And you also have um, a number of food pantries that come to you um, and supply, like fill their supplies to help other people as well. Is that right? We do, yeah. We have about 70 other nonprofits who are smaller than we are. So we're able to go and pick up large quantities of food from these grocery stores and distributors. And there are a lot of smaller places that don't have that capacity, a lot of church food pantries or shelters or after school programs. So they're able to come get food from Birch and give to their population. So through those agencies, we reach about 20,000 people every week. That is an amazing, I had no idea, 70 other organizations, that's fantastic. So when people donate um, to the packages, can you tell me where does that, uh, where does the money go? Yeah, so the money goes directly towards helping get food and financial education to our families. Um, so it helps them be able to come and shop at Birch, just like a normal grocery store, being able to pick the foods that they want and they will need for their families. Um, we're set up so that people have choice and dignity in coming to Birch. So any of those do donations directly help those families be able to feed their own families and take care of what they need and get ahead um, and get out of debt. Thank you both for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so, you so, much. so much. We're so excited and excited for your cookbook too. This Great. is going to be very exciting. Enjoy it. So um, I want to introduce to you um, one our first live performance today. It's one of my season one guests on the podcast, and here uh, here comes Chasing Ebenezer. a song for the men we see living out the American dream breaking their back for peace and security selling their soul to silver and gold tell them all their rust and growing old lead them back to the dirt from where they came oh come and drink from the water oh come and drink for free Oh, the streams, they'll flow, are priceless. They're what you really need to wash away the grief. It's a song for the working man, trusting in his well-laid plans. Rest in hope, hope foundations made of sand. The rain had poured, the levee broke, the, the economy, economy crashed, it's all she rode. Begging for a bailout from the lender's hand. So we say, oh, come, come and drink from the water. Oh, come, come and drink for free. free. The streams that flow are priceless. They're what you really need to wash away the This how it's supposed to be or Could it be normally Here's the change Physical death and natural birth Bleeding our souls to work the earth Could it be the snake bite Running through our veins We need an antidote We need a cure We need an antidote We need a cure Is there a blood transfusion I can get To overcome my fear and regret Blood transfusion I can get To overcome the world Is there a blood transfusion I can get To overcome my fear and regret Blood transfusion I can get To overcome the world Oh, come and drink from the water. Oh, come and drink for free. The streams that flow are priceless. Come rest your weary feet and wash away. Oh, come and drink from the water. Oh, come. And drink for free. Oh, come and drink for free. The streams that flow are priceless. Can rest your weary feet and wash away your need. I am a refugee running from the enemy. I am a refugee running to you. I am a refugee running from the enemy. I am a refugee running to you. Oh, 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 o
a little note in here okay. so anyway I'm just gonna hand it off and enjoy enjoy it so tell me about that song you you wrote what's it about oh man it's about so many things it's about the fact that life is hard and we sometimes assume that that's the way it has to be instead of having hope and pushing through stuff tell me real quick what's the recipe that you have in the book oh yeah it's a farmers risotto we play so many farmers markets so I just yeah, they're so inspiring. So check out your local farmer's market. All right, awesome. Thank you very Thank much for you. being Thank here. Congratulations. Thank you, and thanks for singing live. Yeah. I appreciate it. And uh, on the heels of that, we've got a very special message from Mr. Tony Starlight. Hello, Marty. It's your friend, Tony Starlight, along with my old friend, Boney Starlight. Of course, Boney is everybody's friend. He's always waving. It's a good way to make friends. And I consider you a friend, and so I'm very delighted that uh, I see that you're finally coming out with this cookbook. Uh, and I was proud to be included as part of it. I look forward to getting my copy and cooking my way through the recipes and sharing good times and good food with the people uh, that are all together, bound between those two covers of your new project. Um, I really enjoyed you coming out and visiting me at my home on the Multnomah Channel in Scapoo. Well, now I'm coming to you from my new home here in Georgetown, South Carolina. And uh, again, I really look forward to getting that cookbook and bring a little of the Pacific Northwest to me here in the Southeast. Now, I didn't want this occasion to go unspoiled by a Tony Starlight song. So here I am uh, singing you something that I wrote literally five minutes ago. Hey kids, guess who's got a new book full of good recipes that you can cook? We'll eat the fatty calf tonight, so stick around. You're gonna be so happy with this new thrill that you found. There's candy and cookies, all types of food. Damn good, m -m 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 Marty and the chefs. Oh, but she's weird, but she's wonderful. Oh, Marty, you're really keen. She comes to your house, she cooks with you. You know, I read it in a Facebook post. Oh, no, m -m -m Marty and the chefs. So, Marty. Tell me more in your words what goes on in your podcast. Most creative people that I know, they're pretty good cooks for the most part. It's just that it blends over, kind of bleeds over into the kitchen, you know, and that creativity and making things. Um, and we, um, sometimes they, my guests perform live if they're a musician. Uh, we cook a recipe together um, and uh, we laugh a lot just a really fun touching information about where they got their recipes and their families and how uh, we're all connected by these things so that's what it's about you just finished season two yep what's next any changes uh, well we've got um, season three coming up um, starting in December which is super exciting and uh, my next endeavor is going to be the friends and family cookbook that's right, and if you want your recipes to be featured in this cookbook, you can email Marty at martysings at gmail.com, and that's M-A-R-T-I, sings at gmail.com. Also, I should mention that season three, we're opening up to um, not only musicians and chefs and foodies and creative people, but all creatives, so poets, artists, singers, actors, um, you know, anything, anything goes. It's going to be just this beautiful, wide paintbrush of humanity, and I can't wait. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Tom Dantoni. Hello. How Welcome. You? I'm old. <laughs> well, um, I want to start this off by oh, uh, giving you your own signed oh, copy boy. of the cookbook. Awesome. Yes. And I'm, I'm just. Uh, Why I'm I so... must have written the foreword on this. <laughs> 
you did I actually did. write the forward in it. I am very grateful for that. So, and it was, it was um, your picture is in there. And uh, oh no, just my picture. A, oh, a glowing review. I'm oh, so boy. deeply grateful. So, I hope it's from years ago. <laughs> Not years ago, but you know, <laughs> a long ago. Yeah. So, what's new with you? Uh, we were had gone through a transition uh -huh. um, because I don't really believe that people want to read about music anymore. Oh. And so we made a conscious decision to go mostly, mostly, not con not all, not all, but mostly multimedia. Huh. You know, uh, uh, and we had a, a whole lot of photographers. Mm -hmm. They're coming back, they're coming, they're sort of trickling back. They, they weren't happy about shooting indoors. Yeah. You know, and, and they're still a little shaky about it. Uh, but they're back the and, and uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, probably the, the best, best jazz writer in town. Right. Shoehorn, Michael Shoehorn Conley. Oh, yeah. That's and, amazing. Uh, and and um, you know, I mean, uh, we'd like to do more. We'd like to do more. I love that. Of course, we've got we've, we've got our, our our popular podcast, Coffee Shop Conversations. Yes, because you that's your podcast. My podcast. And what kind of people do you interview? You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have been actually on it's coffee, a, cop, sh coffee shop have. conversations a while ago, and so. will and will again as we as, as we as, as, um, as yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to do that yeah, um, after yeah. this all gets launched and off. Well, yeah. You and I can go um, have coffee somewhere and just sit down and talk. <laughs> well, we do them at Artichoke Music. Right, and they're they've been they've been good partners in this you know in this, it's it, we do we do it in the cafe and then it's uh, it's fun you know. And it's on uh, video too, right? Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's mostly audio. Uh, this week, uh, this coming up, um, John Waters is on. No kidding. Oh yeah. Oh, that's fantastic! And you've already done that. You pre-recorded it, right? Yeah. How yeah. was the interview? Well, he's always fun. I've known him. For, I've known him since 1970. Oh, really? Yeah. I yeah. wasn't very old in 1970. I was still around, but you know, wasn't very old yet. <laughs> so this so. this is great. This is really good. It's beautiful. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's got all color photos, which is actually a challenge when publishing it because we wanted to make sure that uh, we had enough um, gloss on the pages uh -huh. and you know, when you're doing it on your own, it's a challenge to find uh, the right printer and the oh, right, yeah. you know, yeah. the right everything that starts that off. So yeah, 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 yeah. great. Well, Tom, um, thank you so very much for helping me. I am deeply grateful because I love this podcast. I love it. I have so much fun every day, every interview, and I hope that well, when you obvious. read the cookbook, it'll jump off the page too. That's so. obvious. So <laughs> well, then there you go. So <laughs> yeah, you know, you should. You know, I mean, I'll never forget. We were at, at the Blues Festival the, the week before it, it premiered, yeah. and you must have stopped ten thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> Who were we had a, we had a booth at, at the Blues Festival. You yeah, know, I do and, remember and, ten thousand. I did stop a lot of people. You I stopped a lot of I was people. Like, hey, have you heard of? <laughs> really? <laughs> so you know, well, yeah, we do pretty well now. We've got about twenty thousand plays an episode, so Great. we're we're crawling up there. So we'll yeah. we'll yeah. keep on working. So again, thank you so much for coming down today. I really appreciate well, it. Well, thank you, and nice to see you. So I'm going to introduce another uh, season one guest that um, is a whole band that's here to treat us today. I'm very excited about this one. Um, I'd like to uh, throw it to the Colin Trio. You might say this song. Sounds like someone new. I said, What comes for now is what I give to you. So, where you've been, where you've been, oh, my happy heart. Why do you leave me standing in this dark parking lot with all my nightmares? Tell me to heal the past. Wait a minute.
handing you a cookbook. Oh, thank you. And then uh, Cheo, I brought one for you too. So, hi guys, how's it going? Good, good. You're gonna talk on the mic, okay. and then thank you so much for coming out today and playing. I appreciate it. So, uh, what was? Tell me a little bit about that song that you just sang. Well, that that would be up to her there. That would be up to Colin. <laughs> well, uh, when when John was like, "What do you want me to play on this?" I just said, "Play all the Charlie Brown teacher sounds, please." Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, and that works totally. Great, right? Yeah. You knew what mm -hmm. she meant. I knew exactly what she wanted. That's uh, yeah. fantastic. Saucy, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a great. And then when you guys were on the show, Brian, you did some cooking for me, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I so what'd you cook up? Well, I cooked Cousin Mikey clams, which oh. I named after Cousin Mikey, who showed me how to make good clams. Right. You know? I mean, those, I still think about those clams. We dipped the bread. The sauce was so good, we dipped bread in it afterwards. And I still think about those. They were so <laughs> tremendously good. It's all about the sauce because, um, you know, even people who are like a little apprehensive about eating clams, right. they can still stip, dip the bread in the sauce and it's fantastic. And maybe they're like, I, wow, there's something good here. Maybe I do want to try the clams. Right. Yeah. It was really, really yeah. good. Yeah. So what else did you make? Oh, and I made the, uh, the tuna melt. So you get the, the tuna steaks and you cook them like you would cook a steak, you know, in the cast right. iron. And right. It's almost like it, it almost feels sacrilegious when you cook such a beautiful tuna steak and then you chop it up and make it into That's a tuna melt. That's kind of how I felt. I mean, you... You had this in this beautiful skillet, which I'll ask you about in a second. And then it was like, we chopped it up. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know. The first time I did it, I felt so bad, you know. But then I'm like, no, this is this is good. And this is the way we, we like it. And you can't get it any fresher, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it came out very good. Yeah. Very good. And then tell me about the cast iron skillet. Because oh, that, for me, was the highlight <laughs> of the show. So, yeah, that was my grandmother's. And she had had it. And... Uh, I mean, it's about 100 years old, and she had had it for a long time. Then my parents got it, and then I eventually got it. It's kind of my prized possession, you know. If you, if you break into my house, steal my base, you can have it, but don't take my pan. Yeah. And it, it just, it, it, well, it it's could also so be a weapon. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, right. But, uh, right. <laughs> and it's so smooth on top. You know, you work out all that, and just there's a lot of magic in that pan. So how often do you season it? Oh, I mean, every time I use it. I really? Guess. Well, yeah, because you just, you like when you use it, then you you kind of like wipe it down clean, and then you put some fresh oil on it, and you and you put it away, and then it's just it's just good. And all the sanitary things aside, you think like well, it's not clean unless you put it into hot water with soap. I'm like, nope, it's clean enough. Just, <laughs> just clean it off. It's, it's, just, clean it's clean it's enough. Clean just leave, uh, just leave some of that good, good juju on there. Yeah, you know? and it, but the flavor is amazing when it comes out of that skillet. Oh yeah, there is there is some magic in there. Right. There's lots of. Lots of meals that, that combine yeah. into to everything that you cook on there. I love it. So thank you for doing that. Hey, Colin. Yes. What's next up for the Colin Trio? Um, next up, we are playing on Wednesday at the Laurel Thirst for Happy Hour, a little pre-Thanksgiving show. Awesome. Um, should be lots of fun. We've got a record that we recorded in Muscle Shoals earlier this year that's soon to come out. So. Really? What, when, what month are you thinking? Uh, we're hoping for January, but and we'll you, see. Where can they find out about that? So the Colin Trio .com, you'll find all the good things. And of course, on social media, you can find the Colin Trio. Awesome. So yeah. we're going to talk with John here in a little bit. But I want to say thank you very much, um, Colin you. and Cheo. Thank you very much. And Brian, of course, and John. So thank you <laughs> so much for doing this for me. So I Thanks really appreciate us. it. I'm Bree Gregg, singer songwriter for Redbird in Portland, Oregon, and we were very honored to include a recipe in Marty's Music Kitchen's Season 1 cookbook. Unfortunately, we can't be there this evening. I am traveling for the holidays, but I just wanted to send my love Marty's way, and I also wanted to encourage you to be generous. Um, this is a great cookbook, and a percentage of the proceeds go to Birch Community Services, which is an amazing organization that helps people with financial literacy and get a leg up during a time that they really need help. And they do it with grace and dignity for the people involved. So please be generous and enjoy the show. This is the cookbook. <laughs> Um, and uh, we've got forwards again by Mark Bitterman. You may know him from the international um, company, The Meadow, and also Bitterman Salt Company, which is super cool. Um, and then also, of course, Tom D'Antoni. You just saw him earlier in the show from Oregon Music News. And um, this is just really cool because um, it's got um, it's got all of the podcasts in it. And this is kind of like, here's what Tom's page looks like. 
and um, it has um, a link, a QR code if you buy the physical book. You can scan it and check out uh, the podcast so you can listen while you cook. Um, it also has all the links to find out more about him and quotes and a little behind the scenes information. And then, uh, for example, also here's one uh, from Kendo Roshi and uh, he cooked an, an incredible spicy seafood chowder. Um, and he showed us how to make it. There's the corn, here's all the links and everything like that, uh, quotes. Um, it's a pretty amazing thing. So I feel like it really jumps off the page. Um, and then realizing that I usually use um, an online, I have my laptop in the kitchen with me when I cook mostly. Uh, so sometimes I use a physical cookbook and sometimes I just use um, a PDF online. So I made an interactive PDF of um, the cookbook which is very cool um, because you can download it uh, once you get it on your computer. It has all of the links are live. You can just click on the link for the podcast and it plays. There are videos and outtakes and performances. Some of like uh, Suzanne Nance that you saw uh, at the beginning of the show from All Classical. So um, it's just um, really special and fun. Um, and um, my editor did an amazing job with it, and I'm super proud of both the cookbooks. So that's I, that's all about that. As well, you should be. I have never seen a cookbook like that before, and I love it. I love that you can be cooking and also have the company of those folks that introduced the recipe to you. So now I hear you have another guest. I do. Um, uh, our next guest, um, his name is John Dover, uh, John Dover Trumpet, if you want to find him online. And um, John uh, was actually um, one of my very, very first guests. He was on the test, like the pilot episode when I when I thought about this uh, before the podcast ever, um, ever came into being. And uh, John has been um, uh, uh, my rock through this whole thing. He's also a published author, which is amazing. And uh, not, not to mention um, an outstanding musician. Um, and I know he's been a representative for Bach Trumpets. Um, and um, I can't just the, the amount of information he's given me and the amount of help and holding my hand. He and my friend Naomi LaViolette were the two that really inspired me to um, do this cookbook, to move forward with it, and um, climb that mountain. And I did it all because of Mr. So much, John, and this thank cookbook you. is actually yours. I signed it over to you. Awesome. So, um, thank you so much for your help. Uh, of course. You're actually a published author. Tell me more about that. Yeah, uh, actually, my uh, writing journey started uh, uh, six, seven years ago as actually a side project to my music. Uh -huh. uh, created a character called Johnny Scotch, which uh, incidentally also came up with a musical. Uh, element that we were playing around with for a while too and what I found is that uh, the the writing started to take a little more hold than some of the music so I just kind of leaned into it Wow so uh, four book well three Johnny Scotch books a uh, comic book series uh, I just released a new horror book this last spring and then also have multiple short stories in different anthologies so that is, I'm so impressed. I mean, I have written actually um, several books, but I've never tried to publish them. Uh, and I haven't finished the last one, but um, then there, there, I always thought I was kind of between Stephen King and Dean Coons kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know, you inspire me in so many ways. I don't know, maybe I'll start writing again like that. But um, it's yeah. time to put that other book out, Mark. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Friends and Family Cookbook. That's next. Let's just All right. do one thing at a time. So. <laughs> one at a time. So tell me, um, tell me about your music uh, career a little bit. I mean, you play trumpet. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done pretty much nothing else my, my whole life. I mean, aside from the usual musician gigs, you know, in restaurants and sales and stuff, uh, per, uh, most of my career has been teaching and uh, doing workshops for kids in schools. Right. Then all guest artist appearances, local... Uh, local performances, of course, with my own groups and multiple other groups. Uh, right. Every style of music I can think of, because there's so much great music out there. Why limit yourself to just a single genre? Right. And I can imagine you're like me. I mean, music for me, it's um, just so fundamental and it um, it moves me. I mean, it inspires me. And there's a part of my brain that's my jazz brain, my composing brain. Once that's turned on, it's really hard for me to turn that off. You know, I mean, I like wake up in the middle of the night with another melody and then it's a pain because then I got to get up and write it, write it down. And 
Um, so sometimes I ignore it and I, I really have learned if you open the doors for that, it really, it's, 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 it's um, kind of like following the road that you're, that you're inspired, that you're meant to lead in a way. So absolutely. And it's very invigorating. It helps you feel stronger when you're doing other things that are non-creative based. So, I mean, I, I encourage anyone, whether it's writing, whether it's music, you know, honestly, whether it's working out. You know, right. there's so many different art forms out there that can help inspire and to stimulate the brain. You might as well take advantage of them. Right. So um, just to, to kind of round out um, our little talk here, tell me um, a little bit more about um, how you learned how to cook. I learned how to cook mostly out of necessity because, uh, I mean, a kid in the, the in the 80s with two working parents, right. you get home and you're hungry and you call your parents and say, what are you making for dinner? And they echo that exactly back to you. I don't know, what are you making for dinner? So a lot of my <laughs> cooking adventure was was hit and miss experimentation in the kitchen early on. Um, when my mother was around, she would make sure to you know show me how to do certain things. You know, your spaghetti sauce has to have these things in it. Your you know, seasoning is like this. So I, I, I just learned from doing right. very much so. Right, well, and um... Let's see, we made the Lazy Man's Pina Colada. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was delicious. And then tell me, what else did we make? What's in the recipe book? Uh, in this one, it was chilaquiles oh. uh, with a, a green salsa, tomatillo salsa that I put together earlier in the day. So just a very I, relatively simple dish that honestly is one of the best hangover cures you'll ever run into. I mean, oh, it's eggs, it's well, stale tortilla chips With a monitor, <laughs> moniker like Johnny Scotch, I can imagine that every once in a while you may need that. You might. <laughs> I mean, especially with my uh, my latest book, we I actually partnered with a distillery and they came out with a whiskey that accompanies my book. So. That's right. Um, you were there yesterday. What's the I distillery? Was, uh, Skunk Brothers Spirits out in Stevenson. Washington. That's right. And you did book signings. Yep, book out and there. bottle signings. So. That's so fun. So, yeah. and just uh, as a side note, I'm still trying to recreate um, the black beans with tequila in it, and I have not succeeded yet. Um, just like in 30 seconds, tell me how you made it. Saute some garlic in a little bit of olive oil, black beans. Uh, you can put some onion in there too if you want. Right. And then, you know, salt, pepper to taste, a little bit of cumin, and of course, you just add the tequila in to taste. So if it do, if it doesn't quite give you that little spark, you got to put a little more in. Yeah. And then once you're laying down on the ground, you put too much in. <laughs> and then you need then you need the chili. Then you need the chili the, to bring that, right. you back in. Yeah. <laughs> right. So well, John, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, um, we're gonna have you back on stage a little bit later, right? Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. So next up, um, we have um, uh, just two women that are amazing people to me. Uh, they've made uh, incredible careers and they have amazing music with stunning vocals. And I want to introduce to you um, the uh, soul funk diva, Arietta Ward, and also uh, the first lady of Portland Blues, Miss LaRonda Steele.
<laughs> that was rambunctious. Yeah, it was, but no sustain though. <laughs> We're so happy to have Mark Steele with us on piano. So cool. Thank you, Mark, for being here. Um, he actually had the pleasure of eating my recipe, and uh, and the reason I brought it to Marty's uh cookbook is because the family liked it. It's, it's called Gloopity Glop. I just put it together. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I had in the kitchen, taters, meat, some, some kale, and some other things. I have to read it, actually, to remember what I put in. <laughs> you want to do one more? Sure. All right. Let's do this one in the key of B flat. Oh. Yeah. And y'all can sing along with us. Well, I'm gonna lay down my burdens Down by the riverside Down by, down by the riverside Down by, down by the riverside I'm gonna lay down my burdens Yeah, down by the riverside The study war no more Come on, Edda, what you gotta say now? I'm gonna lay down Arietta, I have a cookbook for you. It's signed. And Lorada, you can look that recipe up again. Yeah, we'll have to. So, and thank you so much, thank Mark, you. for playing. I appreciate it. So, yeah, um, super exciting. I'm really honored to have you both here. You guys are like, and in my book, way up there. <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm, I keep hoping that you guys are going to take me shopping for outfits and stuff because uh -huh. I, I, you know, I need that. And you guys always look so Arietta. beautiful just on her. stage. And, <laughs> Follow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were recently at a, another charity auction, and I know um, that you, Arietta, were like in this gorgeous, like gold dress, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Wow!" So you, was she in it? Yeah. <laughs> she was in the dress. Yeah, she wasn't. Most of her was in the dress. Securing the dress. <laughs> Secure. That's right. That's exactly right. So, um, so you really do amaze me. I mean, you're just an out. And um, singer, and um, I loved having you on the show. Um, what did you cook when we were on the podcast? I cooked my chicken vegetable soup. Mm. Yes, and it was glorious, and it's wonderful. So make sure you get the book. Yeah, because get the book. you too. <laughs> don't make my that's right. And um, and also goes to benefit Birch Community Services, helping families in need. And take a look at those packages. They start with the high amounts, but if you scroll down to the bottom, then you've got the lower amounts that you can buy. So, um, and still a portion of those proceeds go to uh, helping the families um, with uh, food, financial counseling, and helping build that community since they all volunteer. So really appreciate that. Yeah. And then um, LaRonda. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your recent uh, induction into the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Thank you so, so much. So, um, just you. such an honor. And I, I saw those pictures and I'm like, what? she was on my podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, and I had so much fun. And I, you are forever in my heart as my first official guest That's right. of oh, the Marty's Music Kitchen podcast. Yeah, I so, I, I wrangled Lauren in there too unwillingly yeah your I mean, daughter Lo Steele who's yes. also a performer incredible performer. yeah and she just uh, released one of her singles right she did yes so please um, is it on Bandcamp which one is well you can find it? her just, yeah, yeah just find her on Lo Instagram Lo Steele yeah. L-O and then Steele S-T-E-E-L-E so, um, yeah, and pretty amazing. And I can remember um, my guy Todd was on with us on the podcast, and uh, we had a bottle of wine, but we had nothing to open it with. So his whole sole purpose was that he went out into all the neighbor little neighborhood stores looking for a <laughs> we could open open the bottle of wine to go with the how do you, it's not gloopity it's, it's gloop, gloopity glop gloopity glop I right. almost got it right this you time. Did. So yeah. I remember on the outtakes we have some outtakes where I just couldn't. 
I couldn't say it, but it was a, <laughs> one of your kids' favorites, right? Yeah, I just happened to be trying to find something for us to eat that was pretty healthy, and I had a little bit of this, had a little bit of that, and put it all together, and everybody thought it was amazing, so there it is. I said, Mama made gloopity glop tonight. I don't know what to And call they probably it, so. thought that was just hilarious. Yeah, yeah. They, so. they, yeah they, they like that. Yeah, so, well, thank you so much, both of you, for being here thank today you. and for being on the podcast. I just so appreciate well, it. Thanks to you and, and to thank everybody you. who buys this and to the, uh, to the um, nonprofit that you're... you're uh, Birch Community Birch Services. Birch Community Services. Right, yeah, yeah. so. All right, well, um, I think I'm throwing it over to Kristen. Our, all of our donation packages will be live through New Year's Eve. Hey, Marty! I'm so. back! Oh, sorry! <laughs> hey! <laughs> so... Uh, as I say, those donation packages will be live through New Year's Eve, so please tell your friends, keep those donations rolling in, and buy some cookbooks. What is next on the agenda for you creatively? Well, um, the season two uh, Marty's Music Kitchen podcast cookbook is going to come out in the summer, so I'm super excited about that, but I'm also going to be going back into the studio. Um, I've got, I'm going to release a single, and then I'm planning on releasing a video with that. Uh, in the spring, so I'm really excited about that. So it's super fun. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, and I've got something for you. Oh, uh, what could it be? Um, it, well, yeah, um, it, what could it be? I don't know. The same thing I've been giving out this whole time. So, Kristen, I Yay, uh, cookbook. So, thank you so much. Thank I you. Love it. I love it. I love it as well. So, um, and yeah, so there you go. Yeah. I can't wait to be in season two. Oh, that's right. I forgot. What did you cook in cookbook. season two? Well, uh, the Storella sisters and I, or at least five of the seven Storella sisters, right. uh, joined you at Signana Storella's home and made fancy cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. I do remember this because we had so many dishes out in the kitchen. It was pretty, <laughs> pretty amazing and I loved it. We are kind of a 15 ring circus, aren't we? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was super fun, and oh, the conversation was great, time. and the food was amazing. Oh I know I kept trying to get you um, for the ingredients um, That's right. for I one know. of the things that you cook. What'd you cook for me? I cooked deviled eggs, and guess what I've got for you today? Did you really? Would you like a deviled egg? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> these, oh my gosh! Check it out. These are my oh. showboat. Deviled eggs. Okay, this right here, this is a showboat deviled egg. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it doesn't look like much. This, the flavor in this, it's like a hint of smoke. I swear it's a hint of smoke. It's so delicious and I've raved about them and she wouldn't give me her super secret ingredients. Well, yes, I, I, I will give you all the rest of them though. There are so many other ingredients, so it's really close. To, to what I make. Very, very close. Oh, but this is so good. <laughs> I mean, really, just delicious. Thank you very much for bringing oh, us. I appreciate welcome. it. you're welcome. So, yeah, I as much fun as we had on the podcast with you, I have even been enjoying listening to all of your podcasts even more. And, I mean, if you have not signed up for Marty's newsletter, I absolutely encourage you to do so. People thinking about donating to Birch that Birch is a life-changing program. It's also a holistic program. BCS absolutely understands all the barriers that families in this program face to achieve financial freedom. Like I said, it's a financial program. Before it's a food program, food and consumables are just part of the support. It's just unbelievable. We got to start a savings account, which we would have never did before Birch. I have managed to put $4,000 in a savings account in a year. I think to some people $4,000 doesn't feel like a lot of money, but to me it feels like a ton of money. And it's just so nice, like I know my stepsister would always say, well your fridge is so neat and nice. Uh, I'm like, yeah, because it like never had that much food in it. And now it's like a total <laughs> mess. I think my husband's always like, I can't find anything in here. And like, how amazing, right? Like a moment to stop and that my fridge is packed and messy. And the pantry, we actually had to install an extra shelf in our tiny apartment for pantry food, which we had never had before. And literally for 30 days, I made nothing but 
what I was getting from here. And my husband just expressed so much gratitude about how good the food was and what a phenomenal job I was doing. I was like, what? Like, I mean, it just, it felt so good. <laughs> I love this program so much. Like, I just love it so much that um, volunteering is one of those ways that you get to show your gratitude. Um, and I know that people here really need help. In this unprecedented time in which we're living, I am even more grateful for Birch because it, it's like this rock that has continued to allow me as uh, one of the providers in my family to maintain this sense of joy and normalcy. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Kristen, here we are near the end of the show. I know. We made it. I know. 
<laughs> now, I know that you have somebody that special that you want to I know. To I want to give a to. special shout-out to Terry Briggs. I know she's online today. And she is, like, uh, an integral part of Marty's Music Kitchen. She's... Um, helped us in so much of the scheduling and the coordination of everyone and I just uh, deeply appreciate you Terry so thank you with being with us today yeah so I I know we're reaching the end of I this know, I'm so sad. I know me too but don't forget uh, this will be uh, recorded and or it is being recorded and you'll be able to watch it again you could you could be on an infinite loop of the Marty's right. music kitchen Right. Uh, and release all of those, party. All of those links are going to be right underneath. Uh, and again, it's uh, helping just the perfect time of year to help uh, people uh, in need. And Birch Community Services is a fantastic organization. So um, be sure to click on that link, scroll through the packages, take a look, and um, see if you give what you can. So yeah. there you go. And if you enjoy Marty's creative endeavors, you might want to check out her Patreon. Uh, so I know that you have lots to say about your patrons. Okay, so first of all, um, here, can I borrow that cookbook? Yes. Um, the um, patrons on patreon.com, they're like um, patrons of the arts. So um, they help, um, they give us all small stipend every month uh, toward uh, the Marty's Music Kitchen Endeavors and my uh, videos and my music um, as small as um, $3 a month and as, many, as much as $20 a month. Um, and it is so... Um, helpful. It has helped me so much to be able to create things like this and to help other people and also to create this cookbook and um, they are actually on the very, oops, the very first page right here. I thank all of my patrons and I'm just gonna, uh, it says dedicated to my patrons from the bottom of my heart. I say thank you and I'm just gonna read them off right now. So Don Bartell, Kelly Brown, DC Gothic, Linda Dick, Nina Dunn, Paul Kennedy, Elliot, uh, Elliot, Roger, and Debbie Espinar from Sister Mercy. They're also on the cookbook. Michael Jude, David Harmon, Cindy Harris, Joey Herbert, Brenda Quint Gable, Peter Gunn, and Leanne Flandreau. I know they're watching today, so that's awesome. Jerry Haskins, Greg and Angela O'Neill, which is awesome. Um, Antonio Torres, Marquita and John Kudra, Amy Johnson, Naomi Violette. Um, you should check her out. She's amazing. Nora Tim and Todd Weedman. So that's how much I love my patrons. I put them in the cookbook. So um, if any, uh, if you want to check that out, go to patreon.com forward slash Marty Mendenhall. Yeah, there are plenty of costs behind this cookbook as well as Marty's podcast. So if you will consider supporting her, we would be so grateful. Yes, thank you. So, well, I think that's it. I think I think Almost. maybe we're just about ready to. Do you want to sing us out? I think of, since these guys are with me, we should yeah, sing it all. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, you know, anybody can pop up on stage and join me if you want to. I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. So, Mark, <laughs> I said just hit something and let us just to start. So I'll just start scatting. Give me a beat there. <laughs> Take a course.